In computer science, the analysis of algorithms is the determination of the computational complexity of algorithms, that is the amount of time, storage and or other resources necessary to execute them. Usually, this involves determining a function that relates the length of an algorithm's input to the number of steps it takes its time complexity or the number of storage locations it uses its space complexity. An algorithm is said to be efficient when this function's values are small, or grow slowly compared to a growth in the size of the input. Different inputs of the same length may cause the algorithm to have different behavior, so best, worst and average case descriptions might all be of practical interest. When not otherwise specified, the function describing the performance of an algorithm is usually an upper bound, determined from the worst case inputs to the algorithm. The term, ''analysis of algorithms'' was coined by Donald Nuth. Algorithm analysis is an important part of a broader computational complexity theory, which provides theoretical estimates for the resources needed by any algorithm which solves a given computational problem. These estimates provide an insight into reasonable directions of search for efficient algorithms. In theoretical analysis of algorithms it is common to estimate their complexity in the asymptotic sense, i.e., to estimate the complexity function for arbitrarily large input. Big O notation, big omega notation and big theta notation are used to this end. For instance, binary search is said to run in a number of steps proportional to the logarithm of the length of the sorted list being searched, or in O log n, colloquially in logarithmic time. Usually asymptotic estimates are used because different implementations of the same algorithm may differ in efficiency. However the efficiencies of any two reasonable implementations of a given algorithm are related by a constant multiplicative factor called a hidden constant. Exact not asymptotic measures of efficiency can sometimes be computed but they usually require certain assumptions concerning the particular implementation of the algorithm, called model of computation. A model of computation may be defined in terms of an abstract computer, e.g., Turing machine, and or by postulating that certain operations are executed in unit time. For example, if the sorted list to which we apply binary search has n elements, and we can guarantee that each lookup of an element in the list can be done in unit time, then at most log 2 n plus 1 time units are needed to return an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Cost models Time efficiency estimates depend on what we define to be a step. For the analysis to correspond usefully to the actual execution time, the time required to perform a step must be guaranteed to be bounded above by a constant. One must be careful here, for instance, some analyses count an addition of two numbers as one step. This assumption may not be warranted in certain contexts. For example, if the numbers involved in a computation may be arbitrarily large, the time required by a single addition can no longer be assumed to be constant. Two cost models are generally used. The uniform cost model, also called uniform cost measurement and similar variations, assigns a constant cost to every machine operation, regardless of the size of the numbers involved. The logarithmic cost model, also called logarithmic cost measurement and similar variations, assigns a cost to every machine operation proportional to the number of bits involved. The latter is more cumbersome to use, so it's only employed when necessary, for example in the analysis of arbitrary precision arithmetic algorithms, like those used in cryptography. A key point which is often overlooked is that published lower bounds for problems are often given for a model of computation that is more restricted than the set of operations that you could use in practice and therefore there are algorithms that are faster than what would naively be thought possible. <laughs> Runtime analysis 
Runtime analysis is a theoretical classification that estimates and anticipates the increase in running time or run time of an algorithm as its input size, usually denoted as n, increases. Runtime efficiency is a topic of great interest in computer science. A program can take seconds, hours, or even years to finish executing, depending on which algorithm it implements. While software profiling techniques can be used to measure an algorithm's runtime in practice, they cannot provide timing data for all infinitely many possible inputs, the latter can only be achieved by the theoretical methods of runtime analysis. <laughs> Shortcomings of empirical metrics Since algorithms are platform independent i.e. a given algorithm can be implemented in an arbitrary programming language on an arbitrary computer running an arbitrary operating system, there are additional significant drawbacks to using an empirical approach to gauge the comparative performance of a given set of algorithms. Take as an example a program that looks up a specific entry in a sorted list of size n. Suppose this program were implemented on computer A, a state-of-the-art machine, using a linear search algorithm, and on computer B, a much slower machine, using a binary search algorithm. Benchmark testing on the two computers running their respective programs might look something like the following. Based on these metrics, it would be easy to jump to the conclusion that computer A is running an algorithm that is far superior in efficiency to that of computer B. However, if the size of the input list is increased to a sufficient number, that conclusion is dramatically demonstrated to be in error. Computer A, running the linear search program, exhibits a linear growth rate. The program's run time is directly proportional to its input size. Doubling the input size doubles the runtime, quadrupling the input size quadruples the runtime, and so forth. On the other hand, computer B, running the binary search program, exhibits a logarithmic growth rate. Quadrupling the input size only increases the runtime by a constant amount, in this example, 50,000 nanoseconds. Even though computer A is ostensibly a faster machine, computer B will inevitably surpass computer A in runtime because it's running an algorithm with a much slower growth rate. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Orders of growth. Informally, an algorithm can be said to exhibit a growth rate on the order of a mathematical function if beyond a certain input size n, the function f n times a positive constant provides an upper bound or limit for the runtime of that algorithm. In other words, for a given input size n greater than some n0 and a constant c, the running time of that algorithm will never be larger than c times f n displaystyle c times f n. This concept is frequently expressed using big O notation. For example, since the run time of insertion sort grows quadratically as its input size increases, insertion sort can be said to be of order O n2. Big O notation is a convenient way to express the worst-case scenario for a given algorithm, although it can also be used to express the average case. For example, the worst-case scenario for quicksort is O n2, but the average case run time is O n log n. Empirical orders of growth Assuming the execution time follows power rule, t approximately equals k na, the coefficient a can be found by taking empirical measurements of runtime t 1 t 2 display style t underscore 1 t underscore 2 at some problem size points n 1 n 2 display style n underscore 1 n underscore 2 
and calculating t 2 t 1 equals n 2 n 1 Display style t underscore two t underscore one equals n underscore two n underscore one carrot a so that a equals log t two t one log n two n one Display style a equals log t underscore two t underscore one log n underscore two n underscore one. In other words, this measures the slope of the empirical line on the log-log plot of execution time versus problem size at some size point. If the order of growth indeed follows the power rule and so the line on log log plot is indeed a straight line, the empirical value of A will stay constant at different ranges, and if not, it will change and the line is a curved line but still could serve for comparison of any two given algorithms as to their empirical local orders of growth behavior. Applied to the above table, it is clearly seen that the first algorithm exhibits a linear order of growth indeed following the power rule. The empirical values for the second one are diminishing rapidly, suggesting it follows another rule of growth and in any case has much lower local orders of growth and improving further still, empirically, than the first one. <laughs> Evaluating runtime complexity The runtime complexity for the worst case scenario of a given algorithm can sometimes be evaluated by examining the structure of the algorithm and making some simplifying assumptions. Consider the following pseudocode 1 get a positive integer from input, 2 if n greater than 10, 3 print. This might take a while. 4 for i equals 1 to n. 5 for j equals 1 to i 6 print i asterisk j 7 print done A given computer will take a discrete amount of time to execute each of the instructions involved with carrying out this algorithm. The specific amount of time to carry out a given instruction will vary depending on which instruction is being executed and which computer is executing it, but on a conventional computer, this amount will be deterministic. Say that the actions carried out in step 1 are considered to consume time t1, step 2 uses time t2, and so forth. In the algorithm above, steps 1, 2 and 7 will only be run once. For a worst-case evaluation, it should be assumed that step 3 will be run as well. Thus the total amount of time to run steps 1 to 3 and step 7 is t 1 plus t 2 plus t 3 plus t 7 Display style t underscore one plus t underscore two plus t underscore three plus t underscore seven. The loops in steps four, five, and six are trickier to evaluate. The outer loop test in step four will execute n plus one times. Note that an extra step is required to terminate the for loop, hence n plus one and not n executions, which will consume t four n plus one time. The inner loop, on the other hand, is governed by the value of j, which iterates from 1 to i. On the first pass through the outer loop, j iterates from 1 to 1, the inner loop makes one pass, so running the inner loop body step six consumes t6 time, and the inner loop test step five consumes 2 t5 time. During the next pass through the outer loop, j iterates from 1 to 2, the inner loop makes two passes, so running the inner loop body step 6 consumes 2t6 time, and the inner loop test step 5 consumes 3t5 time. 
Altogether, the total time required to run the inner loop body can be expressed as an arithmetic progression t 6 plus 2 t 6 plus 3 t 6 plus plus n minus 1 t 6 plus n t 6 Display style t underscore six plus two t underscore six plus three t underscore six plus c d o t s plus n one t underscore six plus n t underscore six, which can be factored as t six one plus two plus three plus plus n minus 1 plus n equals t 6 1 2 n 2 plus n Display style T underscore six left one plus two plus three plus C D O T S plus N one plus N right equals T underscore six left frac one two N carrot two plus N right The total time required to Ru. And the outer loop test can be evaluated similarly two T five plus three T five plus four T five plus plus N minus one T five plus N T five plus N plus 1 t 5 equals t 5 plus 2 t 5 plus 3 t 5 plus 4 t 5 plus plus n minus 1 t 5 Plus N T five plus N plus one T five minus T five display style begin aligned and two T underscore five plus three T underscore five plus four T underscore five plus C D O T S plus N one T underscore five plus N T underscore five plus N plus one T underscore five equals and T underscore five plus two T underscore five plus three T underscore five plus four 4 T underscore 5 plus C D O T S plus N1 T underscore 5 plus N T underscore 5 plus N plus 1 T underscore 5 T underscore 5 end aligned which can be factored as T5 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus plus N minus 1 plus N plus N plus 1 minus T5 equals 1 2 N 2 plus N T five plus N plus one T five minus T five equals T five one two N two plus N plus N T five equals one two N 
2 plus 3 n T five display style begin aligned and T underscore five left one plus two plus three plus C D O T S plus N one plus N plus N plus one right T underscore five equals and left frac one two N carrot two plus N right T underscore five plus N plus one T underscore five T underscore five equals and T underscore five left frac one two N carrot two plus N right plus N T underscore five equals and left frac one two N carrot two plus three N right T underscore five end aligned therefore the total running time for this algorithm is F N equals T one plus T two plus T three plus T seven plus N plus one T four plus one two N two plus N T six plus one two N two plus three N T five Display style F N equals T underscore one plus T underscore two plus T underscore three plus T underscore seven plus N plus one T underscore four plus left frac one two N carrot two plus N right T underscore six plus left frac one two N carrot two plus three N right T underscore five which reduces to F N equals one two N two plus N T six plus one two N two plus three N T five plus N plus one T four plus T one plus T two plus T three plus T seven Display style F N equals left frac one two N carrot two plus N right T underscore six plus left frac one two N carrot two plus three N right T underscore five plus N plus one T underscore four plus T underscore one plus T underscore two plus T underscore three plus T underscore seven as a rule of thumb, one can assume that the highest order term in any given function dominates its rate of growth and thus defines its runtime order. In this example, n2 is the highest order term, so one can conclude that f n equals o n2. Formally, this can be proven as follows: prove that 1 2 n 2 plus N T six plus one two N two plus three N T five plus N plus one T four plus T one plus T two plus T three plus T seven C N two N N zero Display style left frac one two N carrot two plus N right T underscore six plus left frac one two N carrot two plus three N right T underscore five plus N plus one T underscore four plus T underscore 
one plus T underscore two plus T underscore three plus T underscore seven LEQ CN carrot two N GEQ N underscore zero one two N two plus N T six plus one two N two plus three N T five plus N plus one T four plus T one plus T two plus T three plus T seven N two plus N T six plus N two plus three N T five plus N plus one T four plus T one plus T two plus T three plus T seven for N zero display style begin aligned and left frac one two N carrot two plus N right T underscore six plus left frac one two N carrot two plus three N right T underscore five plus N plus one T underscore four plus T underscore underscore one plus T underscore two plus T underscore three plus T underscore seven LEQ and N carrot two plus N T underscore six plus N carrot two plus three N T underscore five plus N plus one T underscore four plus T underscore one plus T underscore two plus T underscore three plus T underscore seven text for N G E Q zero end aligned let K be a constant greater than or equal to t1 t7 t6 n 2 plus n plus t5 n 2 plus 3 n plus n plus one T four plus T one plus T two plus T three plus T seven K N two plus N plus K N two plus three N plus K N plus five K equals 2 k n 2 plus 5 k n plus 5 k 2 k n 2 plus 5 k n 2 plus 5 k n 2 for n 1 equals 12 k n 2 display style begin aligned and T underscore 6 n carrot 2 plus n plus T underscore 5 n carrot 2 plus 3 n plus n plus 1 T underscore 4 plus T underscore 1 plus T underscore 2 plus T underscore 3 plus T underscore 7 leq k n carrot 2 plus n plus k n carrot 2 plus 3 n plus k n plus 5 k equals and 2 knots carrot 2 plus 5 knots plus 5 k leq 2 knots carrot 2 plus 5 knots carrot 2 plus 5 knots carrot 2 text for n g e q 1 equals 12 knots carrot 2 end aligned therefore 1 2 n 2 plus n t 6 plus 1 2 n 2 plus 3 N T five plus N plus one T four plus T one plus T two plus 
T three plus T seven C N two N N zero four C equals twelve K N zero equals one Display style left frac one two N carrot two plus N right T underscore six plus left frac one two N carrot two plus three N right T underscore five plus N plus one T underscore four plus T underscore one plus T underscore two plus T underscore three plus T underscore seven L E Q C N carrot two N G E Q N underscore zero text for C equals twenty 12 k n underscore 0 equals 1 a more elegant approach to analyzing this algorithm would be to declare that t1 t7 are all equal to one unit of time in a system of units chosen so that one unit is greater than or equal to the actual times for these steps this would mean that the algorithm's running time breaks down as follows 4 plus i equals 1 n i 4 plus i equals 1 n n equals 4 plus n 2 5 n 2 4 n 1 equals o n 2 Display style four plus sum underscore I equals one carrot N I L E Q four plus sum underscore I equals one carrot N N equals four plus N carrot two L E Q five N carrot two text four N G E Q one equals O N carrot two Topic: Growth rate analysis of other resources. The methodology of runtime analysis can also be utilized for predicting other growth rates, such as consumption of memory space. As an example, consider the following pseudocode, which manages and reallocates memory usage by a program based on the size of a file which that program manages while file still open let n equals size of file for every 100000 kilobytes of increase in file size double the amount of memory reserved in this instance as the file size n increases memory will be consumed at an exponential growth rate which is order o to n this is an extremely rapid and most likely unmanageable growth rate for consumption of memory resources Topic. Relevance Algorithm analysis is important in practice because the accidental or unintentional use of an inefficient algorithm can significantly impact system performance. In time-sensitive applications, an algorithm taking too long to run can render its results outdated or useless. An inefficient algorithm can also end up requiring an uneconomical amount of computing power or storage in order to run, again rendering it practically useless. Topic: <laughs> Constant factors. Analysis of algorithms typically focuses on the asymptotic performance, particularly at the elementary level, but in practical applications constant factors are important, and real-world data is in practice always limited in size. The limit is typically the size of addressable memory, so on 32-bit machines 232. Topic 4 gigabytes greater if segmented memory is used and on 64-bit machines 264 16 exabytes. 
thus given a limited size, an order of growth time or space can be replaced by a constant factor, and in this sense all practical algorithms are O for a large enough constant, or for small enough data. This interpretation is primarily useful for functions that grow extremely slowly. Binary iterated logarithm log asterisk is less than 5 for all practical data 265,536 bits. Binary log 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 n is less than 6 for virtually all practical data 264 bits and binary log log n is less than 64 for virtually all practical data 264 bits. An algorithm with non-constant complexity may nonetheless be more efficient than an algorithm with constant complexity on practical data if the overhead of the constant time algorithm results in a larger constant factor, e.g., one may have k greater than k log log n display style k greater than k log log n so long as k k greater than 6 display style k k greater than 6 and n226 equals 264 display style n for large data linear or quadratic factors cannot be ignored, but for small data an asymptotically inefficient algorithm may be more efficient. This is particularly used in hybrid algorithms, like Timsort, which use an asymptotically efficient algorithm here merge sort, with time complexity n log n, display style n log n, but switch to an asymptotically inefficient algorithm here insertion sort, with time complexity n2, display style n caret 2 for small data, as the simpler algorithm is faster on small data. Topic. See also Amortized analysis Analysis of parallel algorithms Asymptotic computational complexity Best, worst and average case Big O notation Computational complexity theory Master theorem analysis of algorithms NP-complete Numerical analysis Polynomial time Program optimization Profiling computer programming, Scalability Smoothed analysis Termination analysis — the subproblem of checking whether a program will terminate at all Time complexity — includes table of orders of growth for common algorithms Information-based complexity equals equals notes. <laughs>